Hello, my name is Sue Lewis and I'm going to run you through this webinar, which is an introduction to CareerPilot, showing you how CareerPilot is one website with all the information, tools and advice in one place to support young people on their career journey. So what I'm going to show you today is how CareerPilot can help your students become career ready, how it can be used in an embedded way at all levels of your school or college, and that if you do that, how you'll meet Gatsby. And this is part one of a series of two webinars. So today will be a quick introduction to Career Pilot in overview. We will also have a webinar called Getting Started with Career Pilot, which is a bit longer, about an hour and a quarter, and is a hands-on session. We'll show you how you can get started with a specific year group and all the resources you can use to get you started. So Career Pilot has actually got four zones. So the student zone is where everything starts from, but we also have a reporting zone. So when students create data reports, you can actually see that information. There's also an advisor zone, which has got all lesson plans and materials. And we also have a parent zone. We're on an award-winning website, 2018 won the CDI award. We also have a new tool which you can purchase as an add-on to Career Pilot, and that's called the Pathway Planner. So this is a model and triage tool to help you allocate guidance according to the needs of students at three different levels. And if you sign up for that, you'll have particular things the students can do, lots more data and reports you can use, but also lesson plans and materials to help you, which will be located in the advisor zone. So CareerPilot is funded by 20 universities and six UniConnects projects in this area. And therefore, CareerPilot is free to access in this geographical reason, region. Even if you're now free to access area, if you choose to have the Pathway Planner, you do have to pay to kind of add it onto your CareerPilot site, but it only costs £250. If you're external to our area, then you pay for Career Pilot and you can choose whether you add on the Pathway Planner. So Career Pilot is all about trying to support schools and colleges in having a whole school approach to careers. So in terms of Gatsby 1, how you put your stable careers programme together. So in Career Pilot, we've got progressive activities for every year group. Uh, that will actually help them think about what they need to know, but what they maybe need to do. So you and I might be focused on option choices, for example. So it's all about trying to help students become managers of their own careers. So if you're the careers leader, there's lots in career paths that are really going to help you with your role of putting this programme together in a strategic way. So what we have to help you are, is for the students, we've got a three-stage career process that we try to teach them so they can come back to when they make a decision in their lives. Uh, we've got activities, as I said, for every year group, but also lots of resources. The package around that includes five-week PSHE programmes, if you can spare that much time, but also much more as well. And as a careers leader, we wanted to engage all these people who need to be talking about careers. So Career Pilot can be a great resource for tutors to refer to. We've got the parents zone. I've got activities for subject teachers and everything, of course, is leading towards guidance. So your guidance advisor will learn lots of information about the students before they even meet them. So that can really focus guidance in a more personalised way. The Pathway Planner comes in for year 11 and 12. So just the whole school approach, just to put some flesh on that, we've got activities, as I said, for every year group. So you, you could direct your students to do those five or six activities that would fit with age and stage. But you could go a stage further and actually plan a lesson. And to help you deliver the lessons, we've got presentations. A lot of them are recorded as video lessons. So they incorporate those activities for every year group. They have a sort of beginning, then the activities, and then a plenary at the end. Pathway Planner's got specific presentations for year 11 and 12. Around that, we've got resources, as I said before, five-week PSHE programmes, all the resources. That's the green ones you can see there. But they're for every year group. So you can pick and choose what bits you use. The pink ones are 20-minute computer uh, non-computer activities you could do in two to time, which are all careers-related. I've got lots more too, I'm just giving you headlines here. So we've got subject specific resources, so there's 23 for Key Stage 4, 23 for Key Stage 5, and they actually link to an aspect of the curriculum that teacher is up to deliver and just shows them what they can do to make that, that particular topic a bit more focused on careers. Also of our hot jobs as well, 
posters and social media formats you can actually put out some schools do job of the week just to keep parents and students thinking about different jobs so on career pilot we're trying to get across to students how they can become managers of their own careers and why that's so important so we've got an animated video which is available on our home page and we put a Pour out four key things that they could be doing. Know themselves, their motivations, their interests, their values. Do stuff to build their CV and their skills. Know all their options and then use your supporters. That mirrors some of the things we've got on our site as well. So this is Crapald, a one-stop website. This bit is free access across the whole of England. But if you're registered, so if you're subscribing school, students can register themselves here then they get access to the career tools and they can personalise their choices and add them into their career tools and you can see all this information through their report in the reporting zone. You can also access from the homepage the advisor zone and the parent zone as well. So at the top I'm just showing around the site a little bit we've got our popular tools Jobs and job profiles, course search, apprenticeship search, provider search, qualification ladder, over a thousand video stories linked to qualifications and jobs. So what we have in the site is what we call a three-stage process. In the, in the video, we've got four different things, but this is a classic decision-making process. Start with yourself, explore your options, plan your next steps. And if they learn how to do that, they can apply that when they have to make decisions in the future. A lot of our resources are structured under these three headings. But they might already have an idea in mind about a pathway, and then they can click on that, get information and advice. Behind Career Pilot, we're all trained careers advisors and ex-teachers. So if you clicked on A-levels, then it'd be a summary, what you can uh, read if you learn, if you read on, related video stories about the topic. And they can also add anything they're interested in into their career tools. So students register straight onto the site. They own the account then until they're 21, but they give permission for you to have access to their account as part of the registration. They put themselves in a year group, so they will be in your site uh, uh, with the particular year group that they're in. One thing you do have to teach the students so they understand is that they can what we call tag their interests. So top right of most pages is the option to add. There's a plus sign. You can add this job, for example, and that will then appear in the students' um, career tools under my job sectors. They could change it, then get rid of it if they've decided they don't want to be an animal care worker anymore. And that also contributes to their big report, which you can view through the reporting zone. So these are the three stages of the site. Start with you, activities to get them started, thinking about themselves. Explore your options, so multiple ways to do that by age or by jobs or whatever. And then plan your next steps. Haven't got all this information, they could look at their report, they can use their skills map. There's also an ongoing action planner. So whenever we do a career session, we get the students to indicate one or two actions because we're trying to get them to manage their own careers. So start with you, has got activities different ages as I've shown you, quizzes to get them started, job sector quiz, um, showing them ideas of things they could do in work and then we match them to sectors it's worth exploring further. Start with a subject and see where it might lead and we've got a skills map which is a great way for students to recognise they already have a lot of skills and to think how they're going to use that information. We've also got a qualification ladder so they can plot where they are and where they want to go in the future. So activities for every age group, I mentioned them before, um, so you get four or five ideas of things that match with age and stage. And as I said before, in the advisor zone, there'll be an introductory presentation you can download, and a lot of those now are recorded as video lessons. So I'm just going to show you a few things from the Start With You section. My skills profile, and um, this is a tool to help students see they already have a lot of skills because sometimes we ask them what their skills are, they struggle to give an answer. So we ask them what they've done in their life, learning, maybe their work if they're post 16. So, for example, under hobbies, I've kept going with a hobby or sport out of school. And for everything they tick, they find out what skills that activity has given them. So, in this example, it's given them some resilience and the ability to be flexible and stay positive. So when they've done the quiz, they'll end up with what the skills profile this is the post 16 version. And you can see for this student, teamwork has got five examples generated by the quiz. And the idea is they keep adding their own examples. Could be lots of things we haven't asked them about. So they can add an example, 
I babysat, I did an activity, I did an encounter with an employer. What skills did it give you? And then that's added in alongside all the other things that come from the quiz. So all the time they can see how they're generating examples they can use later as evidence. They can also compare their skills to the skills required in a job. So they can put in the name of a job, nurse, doctor, whatever it might be. And then they can actually see the skills required, but also their skills. So they can begin to start to match themselves a little bit cl closer to the job or think about things they can do to build their, their skills profile. When they're ready to apply, they can click use my skills to apply, say what they'd apply in for nurse, for example. Think about the skills they most want to flag up as a to be a nurse, it'd be different if they want to do that or be a plumber. And then they see all their examples. So it's a great tool for helping students start writing their personal statements uh, or prepare for interviews. And if you're doing any encounters as part of Gatsby 5, 6, 7, then they could record all those and they'll be added to their profile as well. So in terms of Gatsby 4, this is a really good starting point. Um, great for the students because they can identify a subject they love and then see where their subject might lead. So they get ideas of jobs, they can look in detail at the job profile, courses at uni, at college, apprenticeships. And we also show them any um, free online courses that are offered through Future Learn, and that are great, particularly for post 16. So find out more about your topic you're interested in, look good in your personal statement. Um, so we've mapped to those as well. So that will start with you. We're on the second section now, which is to explore your options. You can see you can explore by age, or you can look at by jobs or courses, friendship vacancies, etc. I'll just show you a few of those things. So jobs is a very popular part of our site. So you can search for a specific job, look at a job by sector, start with the subject tool can be accessed here as well. There's the job quiz I mentioned before. Compare up to three jobs and see the different salaries and working hours. Uh, there's a whole section about finding a job or work experience, including how to find a virtual work experience with some examples. Or you can see job growth near me. We use the National Career Service infographics to show how jobs are changing across different areas. So if you look by name of job or sector, this is what you'd see. And then you could drill down to a natural job profile. And here you find some labor market information about where it's going to grow, what the salary might be. You'd also, as, as I showed you before, be able to see the skills required and your own skills. You could also see employment by region. So that's quite useful for students seeing where the jobs are across the country. And there's always videos attached to that job, but it also says entry requirements and routes in. So that's really, really useful for students and for their parents as well. So there's some data there. So that's national data about all jobs in that particular in, in the country, but you can drill down to local data as well. So you can also look um, of, at courses or apprenticeship vacancies. So students could search for, for example, a degree. I'm just going to show you that one. Uh, say what degree they're interested in. There's a little drop down subject areas. If they're quite young, they might not know those things. What, where's your postcode and how far are you prepared to travel? Then you get your short list and you can click on any of those, get a lot of data, but a quick link straight into that course as well. And we find it's really useful for students who are younger than 16, because often they don't get access to UCAS or know about that until they're in sixth form. But it's great for students who are younger than that to start exploring different courses at university. So they can always add, as I say, to their career tools. You can see the little plus sign there. So they've been their courses, their apprenticeships, their providers, whatever they're interested in. So the qualification plan I mentioned a few times, that shows qualifications in England from level one to eight. They can say where they are now. So it's great from year 10 upwards, except I'm doing GCSEs. This is what I think I might get. And then they can start to plot their route. So it's quite inspirational um, and helps them think about all the different possibilities and the different ways they can get up to degree level if that's what they want to do. Once they've clicked on something here, in my qualifications, they can add their grades as well. So they said predicted and the next year when they've got them, they could change them to actual. So the, the third stage is planning next steps. So they can look at their full report, they can look at their skills map. And as I said, we have an ongoing action planner we try to use whenever we do a career session. Um, so they can have little things they do in themselves and take control of their careers. 
So the report can be used in, viewed in a dashboard format, which is like one page of the sort of key points. But they can also see the full report, which can be quite detailed, with it's got loads of information. If they've had a careers guidance interview or if a tutor meets with them, all that record of conversation could be put on here. It's called advisor comments, but it's more like a report. Uh, so that's visible then to the student and other, any other staff member who's got access to that student. This is really useful if you're a guidance advisor to get this level of detail before you meet the student. And that report moves up with them every year. So we set a snapshot on August the 31st and then they've got a live report that's always ongoing. So I've talked a lot about the student area. I'm going to show you now the advisor zone. This has changed recently in that we now have a members area. So certain um, resources are restricted to those who've got access to the reporting zone. So if you've got access to reporting zone, your login automatically gives you access to the members area. And any staff member in your school that's got access to reporting zone can also view the members area. So it just looks like it did before, but there's certain areas that are restricted. Uh, in the members area, for example, uh, we've got our PSHG programmes, maps showing activities you could do with it, different age groups and the resources you can use to help you. Uh, new, uh, our hot jobs pack, which are about jobs in the NHS. So there's 12 posters of jobs, but also six 20 minute activities. So in a two to time, uh, a group could look in detail at a job like mental health nurse. And there's particularly suggested activities that um, that group could do to find out more about that job. We've also got additional resources for Gatsby. We've already got maps to show how career path maps to Gatsby. But this is a bit more in detail because this is showing what sort of strategic um, things you can do in order to embed career path, and that will ultimately help you meet the Gatsby benchmarks. We've got twenty-minute um, sessions, so quick careers. Really, specifically after all the lockdowns, where we know schools haven't got much time to do careers, what we've put together two twenty-minute uh, sessions for every year group. So just suggested activities that are progressive that maybe a tutor could deliver and um, just so they keep in touch with careers even if it's been very difficult to do that because of lockdowns. Also in the members area I've got our career guides, I've got detailed information about a range of different careers have changed a lot recently. Useful for careers guidance advisor but also to give out to students who've got particular interest in these and we've just put up um, dentistry, we've got law and veterinary and we're just about to do medicine. There's lots more in the members area that I haven't shown you there. So then I'm just going to show you the parent zone. Now parents really love the main site so definitely tell them about that but in the parent zone by sort of by category, like choices of 14, 16, whatever, they can actually see the answers to questions. They're often interested to know the answers to, I'm not quite sure who to ask. So what we try to do is put together the answers in a very sort of straightforward way so the parents are well informed. So we're talking about the student zone, the advisor zone and the parent zone. I'm just going to talk quickly now about the reporting zone. So this is where you can see all the data the students have been generating by doing the activities. You can set them some of those activities I mentioned for every year age group and in the tasks completed report you'll be able to see what they've done and see the report. You can look at all the job sectors that year 12 are interested in so you get a bit of an idea about which ones are popular and that might help you think about how you plan your encounters for example and how you target students to hear about that encounter. You can drill down the individual and look for a particular student. So you can uh, view any previous reports they've got there from other years, view the full report, and this is where you can also add those advisor comments. And when you've done all that, you can actually download the report sent to the student or the parents as well. You can also, as I said, add um, the report, which happens here. When you say view for report, add comments, you could put that in. You can have uh, links to things within Career Palette. That's called setting up an internal link. So it could be quite an active, dynamic report with lots of useful links for the student. You can also set up action points you agreed with the student. They can set up some themselves, but you can set up them for them as well. 
So if you want to access the report in zone, you need to request a data sharing agreement from careerpilot at bath.ac.uk. Then get it signed by a member of SLT and tell us who's going to be the keeper of your password. We send them a password, then they can actually set up um, other people who need to have access within the school. And we've got free training sessions to support the reporting zone. So the reporting zone is free to access if you're in a free to use area. Uh, otherwise, if you're a subscriber, then you get access to the reporting zone as part of that. We offer lots of free training, which you can access through the advisor zone. And here's some samples of what we've got planned until the summer. That getting started with career pilot, we've got some dates coming up on that. So this is the more hands-on session where you can start thinking about how you're going to get started with your students. So I'm just quickly going to talk about the pathway planner, which, as I mentioned, is something you can add onto your site if you want to. And this is specifically about Gatsby 8, targeting personal guidance and individual needs. So this is our model that we developed through a bid to the Careers and Enterprise Company. We've piloted it with schools, we've got over 100 schools now signed up to use it, and some colleges. So the model starts with the students having one hour in an IT room or on a computer or on a phone where they're introduced to their options. Now we know we do all sorts of things in school to prepare for options, but then in this one hour, they, we're gonna make sure that everybody in that room understands their options for their next stage. So we've designed some presentations you can use and video lessons, you can use those or develop your own. At the end of that session, just for about 10 minutes, they're going to use our pathway planner, which is where we're gonna ask them now which pathway they're particularly interested in. And then through a quiz format, we're gonna find out how ready they are for that pathway and they'll get a red, amber, green score to show their readiness. All that data is then available to the careers leader, the guidance advisor, to allocate guidance to three different levels of need. Then career pilot can be used through guidance, the report can be recorded straight onto the system, and then about four weeks after guidance, tutors are asked to do a follow-up or head to six, whoever it might be, and they literally ask three questions. And if they're at all concerned about the students, they can pop them back into our guidance. So wrapped around this is one lunchtime a week of what we call drop-in. And that means that everything can be mopped up. So everybody will get their first session through the system. But, you know, if they need another session or a tutor feels they need to have a chat, then drop-in is where they will get that additional support. So it's got to be eight plus in a way. So just to show you that quickly, if you're a pathway planner school, is switched on here. It's a different version for year 11 and 12. This is the post 16 version about pathways at 18. So they can say what pathway they're interested in. And anything they're definite or considering, they'll be asked to do uh, our little quiz. So that's the students said they definitely want to do vocational qualifications. So we're going to ask them some questions about how, how ready they are to progress in that pathway. They will get a red, amber, green score for the pathways they're considering or definite. Uh, so they're going to get allocated guidance based on what they're saying here. And anything else you might know about the students, about their grades or whatever. So everybody's going to get a careers guidance advice session, which obviously is Gatsby 8, but they'll get it at different levels. So I've shown you the student area of the pathway plan. I'm just flipping now to the reporting zone. And if you decide on the pathway plan, you've got this new additional bit pathway planner, results and bookings, and then by any sort of group you've set up, you can actually see what pathways your students are interested in and how ready they are. And you can do various actions against the individual. You could look at their answers or view a timeline where they are in a particular time. Book guidance, you can write a little one-liner after the guidance, which summarises where they are as they're moving on. The tutor follow-up is recorded here and the advisor comments can also be accessed from here. We have got some dates coming up, which is specifically an introduction to the Pathway Planner. So if you go to our advisor zone, top left of homepage, you can actually look at the Pathway Planner tile and then you'll see um, the webinar dates. So you could book one in. So just to say there is a charge for the Pathway Planner. Um, if you are, get free subs, subscriptions through an our free to use area, you pay £250 per annum um, for Career Pilot if you're a school, for Pathway Planner if you're a school, £400 a year if you're a college. 
and you get access to a compulsory two hour training session. It's going to show you how to set up your site and give you all the resources and lesson plans. And it'll be switched on at that point as well. But you also become part of a user group so you can contribute to developments. OK, so just remind you, if you want to know more about it, go to the Pathway Planner tile and all that information is there. If you're outside our region, we these are our subscription packages. You can choose to have Career Pilot on Zone or have Career Pilot and Pathway Planner. So for Career Pilot on Zone, there's access to all four zones. Um, it's five nine nine, and if you want the Pathway Planner, I don't know, it's seven nine nine. Colleges, it's a bit more. And special schools, it's a bit less. So if you have any additional questions, the best thing to do is to get in touch with the helpline. It's available from 9 till 3 in term time. There's the telephone number there. It's a very useful number and email address as well. So that's the end of the presentation. Hopefully you'll sign up for, our, sign up for one of our getting started webinars by going to the advisor zone and choosing free training. So thank you for listening and good luck.